Hey guys and welcome back to another episode here at Valarezo Capital. Uh, once again, thank you so much guys for being here. If you haven't done that already, remember to like and subscribe and also share this information with other fellow traders and also with other fellow investors so that they can get weekly updates about the price action that we're seeing in the markets. So remember guys that this video is for informational purposes only and it's just based on my personal opinion so it's not financial advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go with the episode. Uh, remember that today the market is actually closed. The cash session is closed. We actually do have some some activity in the future so we're going to cover that activity and we we're going to build a model of what we can actually expect on Monday. So first of all, let's jump directly here into the charts and let me just grab my drawing tools. So the first chart that we're going to we're going to take a look at and you can see right here, I'm I'm taking a look at the SPX. So as many of you guys, you know that I love the SPX is one of my absolute favorite charts. And I also take a look at uh, a look at the SPY, which is, I think is very, very important. So the reason that I that I take a look at the SPX is because it's, in my opinion is one of the most important is is one of the most important indexes in the market. Of course, we have the DIA, IWM, and QQQ, but the SPX tends to capture most of the time kind of the whole picture that we're looking at the market. And of course, we had a lot of waiting waiting in some very high, uh, very big. Uh, mega cap names that we have in the market and of course sometimes we we tend to see the spy being being pushed by by those names but most of the time we tend to see we tend to get a really nice pulse of what is happening in the market by only looking at the spx so before jumping into the spx let's take a quick look at the at the futures so let me just jump here into the mini futures and you can see right here that we actually had a little bit of a green day today, right? You can see right here in the futures that we are we actually traded a little bit somewhere around a quarter of a percentile up. So you can see that that right here, uh, the SPS is actually trading above this level of resistance. So let's jump directly. Let's jump back into the SPX chart and you will see that that's a very, very important level of supply that we have. And that's that is that level right here. So if we tend to see, if we happen to see the same kind of the same action that we're seeing in the futures in the cash session on Monday, then it's really probable that we're going to gap right above this level of resistance. So if we gap above this level of resistance, we tend to see really strong moves to the upside. And then, of course, the first target is going to be this close right here in the SPX, somewhere around 41.50. And then, of course, the next level, the next close right here, which is somewhere around 41.60. But the ultimate target that I'm going to be looking for in this month of April is going to be uh, 4,200. So that's actually a pretty consistent, pretty nice move that we're probably going to get. Perhaps take out these sellers right here because you know that the market does what the market enjoys doing. The market tends to go all the way up, take out these sellers, and then perhaps we're going to see some, some more of a pullback. But right now, I'm actually expecting a really, really strong move in this month of April. Remember that we tend to see a lot of bullish. We tend to see a lot of bullish activity in this month of April. So that's going to be basically what, what I'm looking for. And also remember, keep this level in mind. This is going to be the eighth exponential moving average right here. You can see that that eight exponential moving average acted as a level of support. And that anchor VWAP that I have, you can see the anchor VWAP is right there at that eight exponential as well. That anchor VWAP is is anchored from from the from the last swing to the downside that we had before this very strong move to the upside. So it's going to be a very important level, and we're seeing a lot of support, and that's actually very very constructive for the bulls going into next week. Now let's take a look also at the QQQs, and this is a very very interesting chart that we have right here. And remember. A lot of people were 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 thinking that we were gonna pull, that we were gonna see a kind of a of a of a move all the way to the downside here in the queues, because we were actually a little bit ex extended from from the moving averages. But remember that even if we are a little bit extended of the moving averages, we have to take into consideration kind of the bigger picture, kind of the of the chart that we are actually breaking from. So if you actually take a look at the chart, you can see right here that we have a really nice cup and handle. And this is a really nice base that is started to form all the way back to, to February. So this is basically kind of a two month uh, almost a two month um, 
base that we had in price and we are starting to see a breakup to the upside you can see right here that we tested we tested the breakout level of support and you can see that bulls step right in into this into the into into this day right here on thursday which was yesterday so we're seeing a lot of support at that level and then the expectation is that we're gonna see continuation, right? That's the expectation. You can see right here that the momentum indicator is above zero, which means that we have more positive momentum, meaning that we were seeing more buying than selling in this instrument. And you can also see that the TTM squeeze, even though we're losing a little bit of momentum, this continues to be way above zero, which means that we are also seeing more positive momentum than negative momentum. And the expectation based on also on the price action is that we're most likely going to see a continuation to the upside. The target is going to be all the way back to 330. That's going to be the target for these moves in the queue, in the queues. And we have the technical setup and we also have the setups in the price action as well. So this one is looking pretty good. And let me just take a look at the IWM because I think that this is a very important chart. Why is the IWM a very important chart right now? Because uh, as most of you guys know, we had the, the little financial crisis that we had. We had a lot of bank failures. We had a couple of bank failures. And then, of course, we had a huge sell-off in the XLF and most of the financial names, inclu including JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and all those, those very big banks. And, of course, IWM has a, has a high weighting on the, on, on the KRE, which is basically the regional bank's ETF. So that, of course, happened, and we also see a lot of pullback in the IWM. However, if you actually take a look here, and this is what I want to show you, you can see that we extended to a, this very important level of supply that we had somewhere around 168. We found buyers. You can see right here the very strong, strong candle that we had this day, and then, of course, we have the move to the upside. We, have a, we were seeing a lot of supply somewhere around 178, 179, but what is really interesting here is that even though that we pull back this week, you can see that we had a pullback this week in the IWM. Check a look at the indicators. If you take a look at the TTM squeeze, you can see that the TTM squeeze is rising, which is basically the opposite of what we had before the move to the downside. So the TTM squeeze is rising. And you can also see right here my buy signal. I have a buy signal in the momentum indicator, which tends to suggest that we're going to see a change in the trend. Of course, price action is king. So we need to see that confirmation for price. But I wouldn't be surprised if we have, if we actually see some, some very similar move to the one that we had here. So you can see right here that we have the mini flag. And I'm expecting a little bit more upside here in the IWM before we see some selling. And of course, there is a wall of sellers right here at 181. So that's going to be very important to notice. But so far, the IWM is looking really, really good. And I think that we're going to see a reversal and a rally going into that 181 level. So that's going to, that's going to be for the market. Now let's take a look at the weekly watch list for, for the next week of April. So let's take a look at the top bullish names that I'm going to be watching. And as a, as a disclaimer, I do have positions on this name. But remember, guys, that this is not financial advice. And you have to take into consideration the size of your portfolio in, and, and also your, your risk tolerance to manage, many of the, to manage many of these ideas. This video, remember, is just for ideas, generate, uh, just kind of for generate more ideas so you can also have these setups in mind for next week. So let's, check out, let's take a look at Visa. So Visa is actually one that I executed on Friday. This is actually one of the, of the last positions that I opened, but I really like the action that I'm seeing here on Visa. You can see that we have a squeeze pointing to the upside is starting to fire to the upside. You can see that momentum is also positive. And then in terms of price action, you can see that here we have the base. We have this breakout above this base, which is looking pretty beautiful. We actually took out these sellers, meaning that buyers are in control. And then we had this beautiful pullback into the eight exponential moving average. This is going to be your first level of support. And then of course, that 21 exponential moving average is also going to be your second level of support if we happen to see a little bit more of pullback more of a pullback but then i'm going to be looking at least to a move for for a, for a following move into this next level of supply and then of course remember that if we happen to close below that 21 exponential moving average then i then this bullish idea might not be valid anymore so now let's take a look at amazon and amazon is actually one of my favorite favorite positions here for this one, I actually opened a position here on, on Wednesday. And this one is looking pretty, pretty interesting. You can see right here that we had the base. 
So we right here, we have the base, we have this cup and handle, we have the breakout, and now we are having the retest of demand. And that's actually pretty, pretty strong. You, you can see right here that we have the retest, and you can see that Amazon retested, flashed a little bit of, of, of stops, but closed very strong on the day. We closed even above that eight exponential moving average. So I'm looking for more upside. In terms of momentum, both momentum indicators are positive, and the price action that we're seeing we're, is also positive, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get a breakout from this level, and then the target is going to be that 200 daily moving average, and of course, keeping a stop perhaps below the low of this candle might be a really good idea going into next week. Let's take a look at Netflix, and Netflix is another that is is another one that is looking pretty pretty strong. You can see right here that we had these, these little base right here. We had this breakout, very strong move to the upside. We also had a breakout from this flag. And now we found a really strong wall of sellers. So this one actually makes a lot of sense to see a little bit of pause. But what I'm liking about Netflix is that we actually found support at that 50 daily moving average. You can see that the 50 daily moving average was kind of a wall of sellers. And now we're seeing that that 50 daily moving average is turning into a demand level. So once we take out supply, then we tend to, to retest that supply. And usually that supply in a high probability fashion tends to act as a level of support. And then usually we tend to see the next uh, leg to the upside. What I really like about Netflix is that we actually have earnings going into the 18. So we tend to see a little bit of a we tend to see a little bit of a run into earnings, into into going into these earnings, we tend to see a little bit of a move to the upside. I call it the run into earnings. So I'm kind of expecting that, uh, I, I'm expecting that to happen based on the price structure that I'm seeing on the charts. So it's gonna be it for Netflix. And then let's take a look at ARK. This is kind of a, a little bit of a more, I wouldn't say advanced setup because all setups are advanced at some point, right? We just have to understand that. But this is kind of a, of a different setup from the ones that I show you because most of the other ones are basically just pullbacks into moving averages, pullbacks back into kind of a, of a structure, kind of into a demand. And this one is also a pullback into demand, but it's a different kind of demand, right? We don't have a breakout like the, the, like the one we had in Amazon. This one is more kind of a, of a pullback into this demand right here. And now the reason is <clears throat> why did I decided to involve my say, myself in ARC? First of all, we have a squeeze. This squeeze is above zero, which I consider to be powerful. And then of course I do have a buy signal and I actually find pretty pretty interesting that even though ARC saw a sell-off, I continue to have positive momentum in my indicator. That's something, that's something that I find interesting and most of the times, if we happen to see ARC reclaim these moving averages, given that momentum is really positive, we tend to see a short squeeze. So that's kind of my expectation going into next week. But remember, keeping a stop below the low of Thursday, I think that's going to be a pretty interesting, a pretty smart idea. And then, of course, I'm going to be looking for a breakout and a move all the way back to 4180. That's going to be the best case scenario for my position in ARC. And of course, it will reclaim the moving averages, perhaps adding near that 821 exponential moving average will make a lot of sense going into next week. And then finally, I'm going to share the SMH. I actually have a position in the SOXL, but I'm going to share the chart of the SMH because every position that I take on leverage ETFs is based on the price action of the main ETF. So let's take a look at the SMH. And this one, I would like to see a, re a reclaim of these moving averages going into next week. One of the reasons that I like to see that in kind of a kind of a in a, in a hurry fashion, right? I want to see that happening next week pretty fast because I am starting to see a sell signal. Usually, these sell signals they can they can they can change, right? It they I, most of my actions are based on the price action of the charts and not mainly on the on the on my indicators. But when I see this contradiction between my my indicators and price action, I just tend to skip the setup. So uh, what is what I what I find interesting here is that we are continue to trade above the moving averages. It's very important for me that price is above that 30 daily moving average. So I want to see price holding that moving average. And then, of course, if we happen to reclaim that eight exponential and this 
level of price structure here, I think that we're probably going to see a flip in the indicator. But of course, I'm going to be continue to monitor that. If we don't see a flip in the indicator, then perhaps SMH is going to fail at supply. That's something that I tend to see when I when I when I get these signals. But of course, we're going to be following day by day. So once again, uh, just as a summary, guy, the SPX is looking bullish. We hold the eight exponential moving average. So my expectation is to see continued bullish uh, momentum in the market as a whole. And I want to continue to focus in the stocks that I trade. And the best setups that I'm watching, once again, is Visa, Amazon, Netflix, ARK, and the SMH. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Remember to also follow me on my Twitter account, at Valariso Capital. And I will see you on future videos. Take care. Have an amazing weekend. And bye-bye.